It was one of the worst catastrophes in all of history. Starting in southern Italy in 1347, people in harbor towns, then inland villages and towns fell terribly, horribly ill. Many crazed with pain and vomiting blood. Swellings in their armpits, neck and groin spread all over their bodies and turned into ghastly black sores. What came to be known as the Black Death killed with astonishing speed. In a few days, sometimes even less. In Florence, the writer Giovanni Boccaccio wrote that the pestilence killed so quickly that an infected person could have breakfast with friends and family and dinner with ancestors in paradise. No one was safe anywhere near the sick or the dead. Some tried to protect themselves by wearing long, waxed gowns, goggles, and beak-like masks filled with herbs to purify the air and block the stink of death and decay but they die too. Eventually, wrote Boccaccio, almost all adopted to the same cruel policy, which was entirely to avoid the sick and everything belonging to them. People by the thousands fled the cities and towns or the countryside, only to find death there too. Farmers stopped tending animals and crops. There were food shortages and price hikes. Law and order broke down. Tight-knit communities broke apart, so did families. The Roman Catholic Church, a powerful force throughout medieval Europe, urged people to save themselves by praying and confessing. But God is deaf nowadays and prayers have no power, wrote English author William Langlan in his epic poem, Pierce Plowman, and boldly brought down with many keen sores and slew much people. In Siena, Italy and other cities, bodies of Black Death victims were carted to mass graves. More than 500 dead were carried daily to a plague pit in Paris, wrote the monk Jean de Venet. For 21st century scientists, these 14th century plague pits hold the answer to what killed so many so quickly. DNA testing and analysis of bones and teeth dug out of mass graves in England, France and Italy have convinced many researchers that the Black Death was caused by an especially vicious strain of bacteria called Yersinia pestis or Y pestis, strains of which still exist today. Historically, Y pestis is most often carried and spread by rats, common on ships and by flea bites. Many historians and researchers believe this accounts for the spread of the Black Death on trading ships from Southwest Asia and East Asia into the harbors and along the trade routes in medieval Europe. With little understanding of what germs were or how they spread and no antibiotics to fight infection, millions died. Some historians now think the plague may have killed as many as 50 million people. The Black Death certainly ended life as medieval Europeans knew it. Death was seen as a grim dance that everyone, rich and poor, was forced to do in the end. A universal dance macabre depicted in woodcuts, murals, paintings. The established power structure, the church and the ruling classes could not stop or control the plague. Those who survived began to question the authority of the bishops and the nobles with so many dead, there were labor shortages across Europe. The workers who were left demanded higher wages, but were refused. By the end of the 14th century, peasant revolts broke out in Italy, France and England. At the same time, the breakdown of the feudal social order would pave the way for change in philosophy, science and culture in Europe that would become known as the Renaissance.